Recently, I got myself a new smartphone. It's a Huawei P8 Lite and it works great. However, I noticed that when heavier apps are running, it gets slightly warm, as electronics usually do. I thought to myself, this can be done better, so I went ahead and built a LEGO smartphone cooling stand. In case you were suspicious about how well it actually cools, wait until the end of the video where I use a temperature sensor and some other cool gadgets to measure this thing's performance. The stand itself is made entirely out of LEGO. For optimal ergonomics, the pitch can be modified with up to 7 different angles. In addition, you can even fold it entirely closed. If you do, however, it kinda looks like a retarded graphics card. The cooling is achieved by using some 12-fold brushless fans that I had lying around for another project. I do have to power them through an external power supply for now, but once I get my hands on a smaller adapter, that'll change. The fans are locked in place by using flat LEGO pieces. My phone fits perfectly in the stand and doesn't fall off easily, despite the minimal amount of pieces covering the front. If you want to charge your phone, you can take off the bottom piece to insert the plug. But enough talking, let's see how this thing actually performs. Okay, so here is my kind of crazy setup. So first of all, I've got my uh, stand ready to be powered. It's not on right now, it's uh, still not, not powered. Um, and I'm using a Dallas 18B20 temperature sensor to measure this thing's temperature. It's kind of strapped to the back, you can see the wires right here. Um, I'm using Arduino to read out the data. Um, I'll show you the code right here on my screen. So um, I didn't write this myself, um, I got this from the internet, I'll put a link in the description to where you can find this, it's quite simple. So what this does, it's code for the Arduino that will, um, you know, it reads temperature and then sends it back to your computer via serial communication. So if I were to plug in my Arduino like this, uh, let's see, let's hope it connects instantly, yeah, so there it goes. Uh, normally, yeah, there we go. We can see the data coming in. So it's 20 degrees um, Celsius, pretty much. Now, this is very unstructured, um, so it's not very clear. Of course, it just spams the data. So um, I thought this could be done better. So I went ahead and wrote myself a C sharp program that'll do the job much, much better. So I'll just run it right now. So here you can see. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Let me first connect to my Arduino. There we go. So um, right here in this box, you can see the temperature in real time. So that's temperature right now of my phone, which is about 20 degrees, more like 21 degrees. That's pretty much room temperature. Um, I've also put it down in Fahrenheit. I'm usually going to talk about uh, degrees in this um, video because I'm European. Um, to the right, of course, very flashy. You can see the um, graph kind of updating on in real time. Now it's not going to be that spectacular because the temperature, I'm going to kind of spoil it, the temperature rises very slowly so you won't be able to see that much on here but at least it looks cool. So um, this thing kind of shows what I'm going to be testing today. I'm going to test three states. So first um, the idle state which is basically on my phone is just like this pretty much. Um, he's not on um, there's nothing really going on, so that'll probably just be room temperature. Um, but I'm going to use that as a base to compare my other values to. So every time for every state, um, we reach peak temperature and the lowest temperature, so that's the highest and the lowest temperature, um, and the average temperature. But I'm going to talk more about that data once we're, we've done. So after I've done that, I'm going to kind of put load on my phone. I'm just going to open a whole bunch of apps, of which I know that they're pretty heavy. I'm going to start recording the screen, which actually, they actually give you like a warning um, that it might get your phone very warm if you leave it too long. Um, so that should warm it up as well. And after I've done that, I'm going to uh, put on the fans and pretty much keep going, keep putting load on my uh, phone. So I'm already going to press the idle monitor. Um, I'm probably going to fast forward through this quite a lot because it's very, like, uh, it's, there's not a lot of stuff happening. Okay, so I think that's enough for the idle state. The temperature doesn't really seem to change that much. I've got a little spike here, but that's just uh, the Arduino being a little bit funny. 
So yeah, that was the spike here. Average temperature is about 21 degrees. That's that's pretty good. All right, so let me now turn on my phone and let's put some load on it. Um, so yeah, of course, you get Duel Links. Um, seems to be the most um, demanding app on my phone. So yeah, this is gonna start that up already. My internet is kind of slow, so it might kind of lag out. Oh, that's loud. Oh, shut up. I'm gonna turn that volume. Um, initiate link. Let's see. In the meantime, I'm gonna start screen recording. And uh, while that's starting up, I'm gonna start gathering data. Wow, you can already see that the temperature is rising. We've got 21.2 degrees, pretty much, which is 0.3 uh, degrees Celsius higher than the, the, the idle state. I'm gonna enable auto dual um, because that seems to demand most from my um, CPU and, and GPU. Okay, wow, man, that uh, we got a little spike there, but temperature is already rising a lot. Yeah. So yeah, right there you can see a bunch of bumps. Um, don't mind that. I'm also actually gonna start up my emulator, Pokemon Emerald. I really love this game. I really love Pokemon in general. Let's go to Yu Gi Oh! Duel Links again. Wow, we're already a solid degree Celsius higher than the idle temperature, and it's only going up. You can you can see a little bit of a slope on the graph. Um, it's kind of slightly rising, so that's very promising. Okay, let's see how well Yugi duels in my place. I'm not running any kind of particular deck here, uh, just a Fiend Spellcaster deck, along with like the Field Spell skill that Yugi has. I really actually like this game. It's very simple, but it's much better than all the other free games that uh, Konami made. Let's hope that the AI isn't too stupid. So we're closing in on the 25 degrees mark. Um, that's yeah, pretty substantial. We got a little dip in there. Yeah, the communication with the Arduino isn't optimal. Serial communication is kind of weird. It sends the data in strings, and you have to kind of uh, intercept those strings and take them. It sometimes does weird things and drops off like the decimals. So instead of 24 point. 81, it'll just say 24, and that's why it dips sometimes. But oh, it's getting. You can see the gray line over there. That's um, the bottom gray line is 20 degrees, and the top one is 25 degrees. And you can see the red line is really hugging that top temperature. Oh, I got a new card. Let's look at it. Pay for return. Cool. Okay, let's see if I can take this guy down. I might have to uh, refresh my screen recording because I'm because I'm already four minutes in and I can only record for five minutes at a time. Duel. Oh, he goes first. He's pretty tough. He has like the card where he puts a letter down every turn and when he's got the word final, um, he wins the game instantly. So that's pretty tough. He's got a lot of stall cards. You can see he sets stuff in defense, he uses trap cards to boost his defense. Two trap cards is pretty... Uh, yeah, there we go. So that's the first letter. It spells final, and when the entire word is spelled, you lose. Fun fact, in the Japanese version, it's death, but because the Americans thought that would be too scary for kids, they changed the word into final. Uh, we're reaching 25.6 degrees. Pretty goddamn high. Now, the problem is, next turn I'm dead. If he... If I don't manage to destroy him next turn, I'm gonna be dead. Oh wow, he does nothing. Oh well. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty conclusive actually. Let me just summon a monster just because I can. Dark effigy, and let's just completely destroy him. Yes, yes, you you do attack black points directly. You haven't won yet? Actually, I have. There we go. GG. There we go. He's dead. I win. Thank you very much. Um, 
so I think yeah this is pretty conclusive you don't need to go to all the way to 28 degrees to show that this thing gets hot a lot so I think I'm gonna um, press this button there we go so we can see the peak temperature is what we uh, like just got 26.81 degrees lowest was 21 is exactly when we started as you can see oh I think my internet just died ah great well you can see that the um, okay thank you very much I got a random gem um, so you can see that the average temperature isn't very um, relevant and doesn't really show that much, but that's okay. You can still see that there, that's about five degrees extra from, no, four degrees extra from room temperature. But let's now turn on the fats. So I've got a multimeter right there that I'll show you the voltage on the fans. I There's rated for 12 volts. You can go up to 20 and they'll just spin faster, but they'll make a lot of noise and I'll just use them as they are supposed to be used. So here we go. I'm gonna mod start the monitoring. And there we go. Normally, oh, I haven't got my power supply plugged in. There we go. And you can hear them spin up. And look at the temperatures already down. Um, and just to be sure, you guys, I'll just hop in a duel very fast. You can actually see the slope of this thing going down. And it'll go down very fast at the beginning. It won't go down that much anymore. Wow, look at that drop. Wow, that's, that's really cool. That's very satisfying to watch. Maybe that's just me. I'm gonna battle Taya Gardner. Oh, we're passing the 25 degrees mark. I think we've just crossed it. Yeah, there we go. The temperature is consistently dropping. 24. And this is only over a span of like, what, a few minutes? I don't know. It took me about 20 minutes to get to this high temperature and it's already going down so fast. So it seems um, we're at 22.25 and that's that's like only one degree above um, room temperature like 1.3 degrees more accurately let's wait a little bit longer and see if we can pump it up or pump it down I guess okay so I think we're kind of reaching an end point here uh, the temperature is, slight, is slightly rising again, I, it's, it's hovering up over like 22 degrees. Um, the lowest point was actually 22.6 or something, and uh, 21.6 or something, um, but we got some dips like right here, that was a dip. So uh, it'll be, you can see the lowest temperature will probably be 21. But let's uh, stop monitoring, let's see. So the highest temperature, again, that's where we started, so that's pretty high, and the lowest is the dip is 21. So these two are pretty equivalent, um, and these temperatures are, you know, the data isn't that conclusive. But you can still see kind of a pattern. We got 21 here, about 23 here, and 25 there, so there's definitely a gap. And if I were to just keep going for longer, you'd see that this, this number would drop even more. Now let me just press this button. Here we go. Look at this. So the gray one, that's the idle. So that's when we started. Now, it's I only recorded for a very short time, of course. But when I it started heating heating up, and you can see this kind of curvature. You can see it starts going quite fast at the beginning, and then it kind of flattens out. Although, actually, it's pretty linear. The heating up, I, I actually noticed that as well, that the heating up is very linear. But then I started cooling, and that's the blue line, and you can see how there's like a very nice, I think it's kind of, it looks a bit like a parabola or like a exponential function where it, it starts very fast and then as we get closer to our idle temperature, it kind of flattens out and stabilizes and right at the end we have a little like peak in temperature. Um, but that's, that's pretty cool and it's, it shows that this actually works well. Um, which I think is awesome. In case you were wondering whether the cooling is actually tangible, trust me, it is. When cooled, it's barely even noticeable that the phone is any warmer than when it's idle. To sum up, the stand cools as it should. 
In addition, I would even say that just the convenience of not having to hold your phone all the time is worth it already. I hope you guys liked this video as much as I like testing this thing. In any case, thanks for watching.